So the internet is blowing up about the Second Amendment. All right, it's just the Second Amendment is trending on Twitter. And what's got people talking about the Second Amendment? Well, it looks as if Donald Trump has threatened to assassinate Hillary Rodham Clinton or to encourage her assassination. At least that's what we're hearing from the media. Now, when we're looking at things the media is telling us, we need to evaluate for ourselves what is being said. And as a teacher, uh, you know, a teacher of history, and we're going to have a little fireside chat here just without the fire, I'm really concerned that a lot of Americans don't understand the difference between an assassination threat or the conditional threat of revolutionary violence. Now, as much as we love to glorify people like Martin Luther King and Gandhi, people who were heroes, people who accomplished their aims through nonviolence, we also glorify plenty of people who defended human rights by using violence. Think about our revolution, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Alexander Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton, Hamilton! Yes, Hamilton used violence in order to gain liberty. He was George Washington's aide-de-camp during the Revolutionary War. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence saying that when our inalienable rights are taken away that the citizen body has the right to alter or abolish that government. That comes from John Locke. We all teach this in our classrooms. We learn this as Americans, and that is a legitimate part of the American tradition that stands beside traditions of nonviolence. And so, first of all, think about that, the threat of assassination versus the threat, the conditional threat of revolution revolutionary violence, and let's look at what Donald Trump said. Now, the context here, which we need to have, is that Donald Trump is saying that he's making a case, which some people may consider that stirring up paranoia, fear is a part of elections, that he's making a case that Hillary Rodham Clinton wants to get rid of the Second Amendment. He says here, Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish the Second Amendment, okay? So the assumption here is that Hillary wants to abolish the Second Amendment. By the way, and if she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Now, what he's trying to tell people is you've got to vote for me because I will appoint conservative judges who like the Second Amendment, whereas Hillary won't. won't. So he says, look, if she gets her judges on there and her judges nullify the Second Amendment, which is probably unlikely, but you know he's making that case, he goes on to say, after he says, there's nothing you can do, folks, Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is. I don't know. And then he goes on, this is usually not included in the quote, but he says that will be a tragic day or something like that, okay? But people have said, oh, well, he threatened uh, harm on Hillary Rodham Clinton. He threatened to assassinate her or something like that. No, what he's saying is that perhaps if the Supreme Court were to take away the right to keep and bear arms, which is essentially the right to self-defense, which I, I would say uh, you know, many Americans consider that to be a fundamental constitutional and human right, that perhaps the Second Amendment people, as he calls them, the Second Amendment people, <laughs> wherever they are, um, conjures up images like the Walking Dead or something like that, uh, but they would rise up and they would possibly overthrow that government or take to the streets or, you know, use violence in some way to protect their rights. Now, this is something that right-wing politicians talk about a lot in the United States. Oh, iPad dropped. It's okay. I think it's fine. But right-wing politicians talk about this stuff all the time, that a lot of people say, well, you have the right of self-defense and that the Second Amendment that buried in there, you know, in the text and the subtext is that whole right of revolution, that that right of revolution is implied in the Second and Tenth Amendments or Ninth Amendments, you know, all of that other stuff. If you look at the Bill of Rights, Hip Hughes has some great stuff on that, by the way. And this is really not just a right-wing construct because Malcolm X, there's an iconic photo of Malcolm X where he is looking out the window. He's got his fingers on the blinds, pulling them back. He's looking out the window and in his hand, he's got an assault rifle. All right, he's standing there holding an assault rifle, looking out the window, and he's sending a message that I'm not gonna, just going to sit here and let you kill me and my family, that I will defend my family, that I have a basic right to defend my family. While Martin Luther King said that there should be no violence, Malcolm X said that I am going to defend my rights as a man, my rights as a human being, by any means necessary.
All right, that's what Malcolm X said. I think about also Che Guevara, if you want to go farther to the left, where Che Guevara landed in Cuba as the doctor for the expedition, for Fidel Castro's revolutionary expedition. These 80-something guys land on the Cuban shore, and the government fires upon them. They've been tipped off that they're firing, that they're coming. And Che Guevara is there in a massive confusion, and the doctor that he was... He said that at that moment, he looked at a box of medicine and a box of ammunition, and he picked up the box of ammunition and he didn't look back. Now, is violence something that's preferable? Did Donald Trump even say that tonight? No, violence is not something that's preferable. But is there a point where you would be willing to use violence to defend your basic human rights. And I think that that's something that we as Americans have to grapple with because we do have this history, this tradition of revolutionary violence. Let me know what you think. Put something in the comments. Get your friends involved in the discussion uh, because I think this is a real teachable moment here not to just go back and forth like, oh, he has threatened to assassinate Hillary Rodham Clinton, but let's, let's discuss the idea of revolutionary violence in American history. It's always a pleasure.